Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Shaman King 2021, episode 9. So we're here with another episode of Shaman King, and I'm just going to say right off the bat, I am recording this early. I'm pre-recording this. Normally, I record Monday stuff on Monday. But because Monday, because today, as you're watching this, is Memorial Day, my father's home from work. So I wouldn't have the chance to record. So I'm recording this back on Friday. Um, because my father is home technically today too, but he's out at the moment. So I have time to record. <laughs> um, either way. So last time, last time we did not get what I thought we were going to get. Uh, I thought we were going to go right into the battle, the, the, the rematch with Tao Ren. Instead, we took a break from the fights. We took a break from the shaman fights and had basically some training and character development. Uh, Yo went back home to do some training after everything that had happened uh, with his grandfather. He was put into this sensory deprivation uh, training um, while Manta, meanwhile, came to meet him along with Wooden Sword Ryu. Manta and him kind of had a, I wouldn't say a fight, but a falling out almost, because Yo was trying to push him away, purposely being mean in order to try and save him after what Faust had done to him. He didn't want that same kind of thing to keep happening to Manta, because he, he's his friend. He wanted to protect him. Manta was going to be sent to America by his overly strict, borderline abusive parents. But at the airport, he basically said, fuck this. Yo is my friend. I'm going to go back to him. And he left. He just ran off. And, and Ryu, who he was also at the airport to go to America to be a sushi chef. Okay. <laughs> um saw him and decided to help him instead because he's friends with them as well. And so, yeah. We also had this young girl who was new to being a shaman and was still in training. Um, and we see that she has, like, these two animal spirits, um, a Tanuki and a Kyubi. And they're, bit, they're pranksters. They make her think that Manta and Ryu are going to be trouble and are going to try to, like stop Yo's dreams and everything. And since she has a bit of a crush on Yo, uh, even knowing that Anna and Yo are a thing, she wants to help in any way she can. So she tries to stop them until the truth is revealed. And then Yo comes out and everything's good again between everyone. So... It was solved a little easily, especially with what happened with, between Yo and Mata. I, I will acknowledge that. But at the same time, I, I still think it was good. And I, I believe I said it last week, I didn't remember that, that part at all from the original series or I guess what I have read of the manga. I don't know how much I read of the manga, so I, I don't know. But I don't remember that at all, so it's really interesting. Um, I wonder if that was in the original series. And if it was in the manga, I, I must not have read that far. Or I just forgot. Um, but I'm definitely interested to see where this goes now. I assume we're going to go into the Ren battle this episode, but who knows at this point. Um, I'm definitely interested, though. Um, I, I've been enjoying this very much. I've heard a lot of people are very either divided on it, or some people are even just straight up not liking it. I'm just like, why? And I don't want to watch too many reviews because uh, some of them might talk about spoilers from future parts of the series that I don't want to be spoiled on. Even though I saw the original anime, it's like I, I just I want to go into this as blind as I can still. And for things I don't remember, I don't necessarily want to remember them. 
because that way I can go into this uh, with fresh eyes and everything. So I, I just, I'm being cautious around those kind of videos. And so I just, I'm wondering why wouldn't people like this? The animation's better. I mean, like I talked about last week, um, there is some cases where in the original series there were some cooler shots, some cooler pieces of imagery, but that's about it. That's really the only thing the original series has over this. The voice acting is better. The story is better. Just the setup of everything. There's, there isn't all of that random ass bullshit filler. It's not holding back on as much, even though it is holding back on some things, such as uh, Manta being dissected by Faust. It's not holding back. On, it's not holding back as much as the original did. Um, it's just, it's overall better. It's an improvement drastically in the same way that Digimon Adventure 2020 was, um, which I will be getting back to eventually on the channel. Um, I just have to finish what's in that spot first, and then I'll be getting right back to that, which is this the same spot? I don't know. I don't have that list open on Word at the moment, so I'm, I'm not going to worry about opening that. I think it's actually the same spot. The same slot, whatever you want to call it. Either way, either way. Once that opens up, I'm definitely getting right back to that. But I'm definitely interested to see where we go next. And again, I remember certain things or certain character names, or but not all this information. Like I know there's a character named Lyserg, for example. I don't remember anything about them, though, <laughs> except that they have green hair. And they're in the opening, so... I do know that. And there's other characters I do know and everything as well. And I think there's a tournament arc at some point. Like an actual tournament. But I don't remember. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I don't remember if that's just my mind playing tricks on me. Either way, I'm excited to get to this. So let's do so. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after Fades in Black, then Fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Another really good episode finishing off the preliminaries of the Shaman fight. Uh, we have the rematch of Tao Ren and Yo Asakura. And I I remember them having their, their rematch in the original series. I did not remember that it ended with a draw. Um, so that one I just didn't know, I guess, what to think of. How um I I didn't know I, I didn't remember that. But I'm good with it because it means they both get to move on. And both of them have very valid goals that I, I like to see continue forward. So here we get to see um, the return of uh, Horo Horo as well as Faust as well as they're watching the match. And, and we can see how much both of them have grown. Uh, Ren using his horse now, the new horse with the spirit of Bessans as a kind of last chance, uh, final shot move. And Yo choosing not to go any harder than usual, instead focusing on strategy to try and pierce through the bigger, stronger opponent. And it ends in a draw. Both of them run out of Furioku at the same time. Um, which is interesting, because it looked like Renz ran out while Yo's was still up. So it's interesting that they actually ran out at the same time. Um, but maybe Yo just, I guess, held on to the Oversoul a little longer somehow. I, I don't know. Um, but either way, this means uh, they got a draw, and the Great Spirit is allowing both of them to continue on. So now we're going to go into the opening ceremony of the true Shaman fight. And things are going to only get more exciting and interesting from here.
So, yeah, I can't wait to see exactly where this else goes. We've got a few people we know about, and the preview, as we saw at the end there, since there wasn't actually any end credits for this one because the credits were rolling while the episode was still going, <laughs> um, we saw Wooden Sword Ryu again. So it's like, we're, I think we're finally going to see him uh, get, his, get his partnership with Tokugero going on. Um, and also, they would have an odd number of entrants right now, correct? Like, with both Yo and Ren moving on, wouldn't that mean there's an odd number of, uh, of shaman competing? Or am I wrong about that? And if that's the case, that would mean that Ryu could be a possible wild card thrown in as well. We'll have to see. But we also find out that Silva is going to be watching over and guiding both Ren and Yo, um, which really helps to further cement, as this episode just did in general, the fact that these two are kind of two sides of the same coin, or as shown in the visuals of this episode, two sides of yin and yang. Um, so it, it's really interesting to see that Silva now, in order to remain impartial, has to guide both of them. It's going to be an interesting dynamic to see go forward. We also see June talking to her father throughout this episode, uh, standing up for Ren and the just messed up mental state that he has, how he, he's been raised in tragedy, and how deep within him he's good. But he's so fucked up that he's become all aggressive and everything. And, and she even tells her father, it's like, he's going to lose because of Yo. And they tie. But let's be honest, he, he basically lost, to be completely fair. Like, he actually lost, but it, just because of the Furyoku difference, it's the only reason that they got a tie. Um, and, and the father doesn't seem as aggressive as I figured he would be. Like, I was thinking, like, when she's saying this, I was thinking he was going to snap at her or something, but he actually seemed more curious. I don't necessarily think he's a good person or anything, but I also don't necessarily think he's a bad person. Like Ren himself, his father might be very complex and might be hiding a little bit of a nice side to him. We'll have to see more. He seems very intimidating. And we saw that June was pleading with him, basically, to set Ren free from all of this. But again, he didn't seem aggressive toward her or anything. So it's going to be interesting to see where all of that goes, too. Um, but yeah, as I said in the reaction, I definitely recognize him. He, like, he's in the intro and on. Even with the intro, it's like I recognized him anyway. Um, I, I, must have, I, he, I must have seen him in the original series. Like, obviously. It's just I didn't remember that he was Ren and June's father. <laughs> um. So I'm going to be interested to see where that goes. There's going to be some more characters popping up that I, I've been waiting for. Yeah, overall, I'm really enjoying this. Like, I can't see why people are being negative about it. Like, it's not perfect. Sure, it could be better in a couple places. Sure, a couple things could be improved upon. Yeah, but that goes for almost any show. For what, for what it is, it's a massive upgrade from the original series. And it's just doing things right. It, it, it's got the characters down, and it's got the story down, and it, it feels more just well-paced. Like, this this was episode 9, and we just finished the preliminaries. By this point in the original series, there was so much filler and stuff, we weren't done with the preliminaries yet. It's ridiculous. And things were out of order in the original, too, apparently, and everything, so it's like, I don't know what the deal with all of that. Well, I mean, I, I guess I can get it because the manga is probably still going on like a lot of series do. 
a lot of series really just rush in getting anime adaptions out, so they have to put in all that filler. A lot of big shonen series did that, obviously. Naruto, Bleach, One Piece. The One Piece's filler is actually, for the most part, good. There's a couple exceptions, but it's, it's rare that it's not good. But I'm not going to get into my gushing over One Piece here. Uh, that is for another video. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, I am very, very excited for this to continue. I think it's set for like 50-something episodes or something like that. I'll have to check that later. But either way, tell me in the comments below what you thought of this episode of Shaman King 2021, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.